Welcome to Ancient Military History, a channel dedicated to providing visual representation of how ancient militaries operated and waged war, going into detail about the real tactics they used to win battles, and showing you, the viewer, how this would have looked in ancient times. In this video, we will be describing one of the most famous battles in English history, the Battle of Hastings, that took place in 1066 AD. This battle was fought between King Harold Godwinson of the Saxons and the Duke of Normandy, also known as William the Conqueror. William was the illegitimate child of Duke Robert of Normandy. Early in William's life, his father died while returning from a pilgrimage to Jerusalem, and so William became the new Duke of Normandy by the age of eight. He was raised in a violent era of war over his dukedom, and, ever strengthened by his circumstances, the relentless Duke William of Normandy began his conquests at the age of 36 in 1064 AD. William's first cousin once removed was the childless King of England, Edward the Confessor, who supposedly promised William succession to the throne. However, Moments before he passed away in 1066, Edward instead granted the Kingdom of England to his brother-in-law, Harold Godwinson. And so, determined to recover what he believed was rightfully his, William the Conqueror amassed his army of well-trained Normans, Bretons, and Flemish, and he ferried them over to the land of England. Sources vary, and some are greatly exaggerated but it is documented that William brought with him up to 150,000 men. However, modern historians believe that the realistic number was a force of 7,000 instead, based on the financial resources that would have been available to a mere duke at this time in history. William and his men arrived on the Saxon shore unopposed. As King Harold Godwinson and his army of Saxons were busy fighting a Norwegian army, who had invaded their lands to the north. After a brutal battle, Harold successfully routed the invaders, but they also suffered significant losses. His force of 15,000 was reduced to about 8,000 men. His army was exhausted and greatly depleted, but to prove his worth as the newly appointed king, Harold decided to march his men south just a few days after the previous battle. And despite his brother's pleas to delay, so they could rest, resupply, and assemble more men. However, Harold had to show his kingdom that they could rely on him to defend their land from the Norman invaders. The armament and weapons used by both armies were very similar. The Saxons and Normans were equipped with mail shirts, conical helmets, swords, and spears. Harold's army was divided in two. The royal and elite bodyguard, called the House Carls, who preferred to fight with large, heavy-hitting battle axes that required two hands to swing. And then the peasant warriors, called the Ferds, who mainly fought with swords and spears. William's army was made up of Bretons, Flemish, and Normans. These forces were divided into three ranks, the archers in front, then the infantry, and lastly, his elite fighting force, the Mounted Knights. 2,000 to 3,000 men who mastered the art of fighting on horseback. When the tired Saxons finally arrived just northwest of Hastings, they positioned themselves on top of a hill in a single line, forming their infamous and impervious shield wall, a Scandinavian battle tactic they learned from centuries of fighting against the Vikings. The shield wall spanned for about half a mile on the hilltop, and was backed by forests. William positioned his army at the base of the hill, with the Normans in the center, the Bretons on the left flank, and the Flemish on the right, and they were aligned in their three ranks of archers, infantry, and cavalry. The battle began with the Norman archers pelting the Saxons with arrows overhead. However, the Saxon shield wall stood firm against the thick cloud of arrows. Then William sent forth his heavy infantry, 
who had to climb up the hill to reach the Saxon wall. The Normans were better trained and more equipped for battle, but the Saxon shield wall stood firm against the superior soldiers. William then ordered his knight cavalry forward, hoping he could break the lines of Saxons with a concentrated charge of heavy cavalry. Hours passed and many men died, yet still, the Saxon shield wall stood firm, with the knight's horses being hacked into pieces by the ferocious battle axis. However, the relentless Normans would not give up so easily. With an unstoppable force fighting an immovable object, William and Harold found themselves at a stalemate. Eventually, as William's forces had to regroup, the left flank of Bredens heard a rumor that their leader was dead and they had begun to flee. Seeing their retreating enemy, the right flank of the Saxon wall broke away from the defensive position and gave chase to the fleeing Bredens. To prevent the fast-growing panic and potentially disastrous end to the battle, William took off his helmet and rode in front of the troops to show that the rumor was untrue. Look at me. I live, and with God's help, I shall conquer. The fleeing Bredens regained their composure, and with them, William led a countercharge against the pursuing Saxons, completely annihilating the exposed soldiers. Upon seeing the success of this tactic, William's army continued this ruse at least two more times, pretending to flee mid-battle and luring the Saxons away. Harold's broken and therefore weakened lines made them more vulnerable to attacks from the cavalry and archers. Eventually, after a long day of evenly matched fighting, the Saxon king fell in battle. There is much debate as to how he died. Tradition has it that an arrow struck him in the eye, but the earliest account of the battle stated that he was hacked into pieces by Norman knights. Whatever truly happened, it was the death of the king that caused the Saxon army to give way and flee. Only Harold's loyal elite bodyguard, the House Carls, remained, but eventually they too were slain in battle. Then throughout the night, the Normans pursued the soldiers who fled in battle until all remaining Saxons were killed. Upon this victory, the Duke William of Normandy marched north, overtaking anyone who opposed him. And two months later, on Christmas Day, December 25th of 1066, he was crowned King of England, forever ending the Saxon reign and fundamentally transforming the country with new architecture, laws, customs, and language. William's French dialect merged with the Anglo-Saxon language, and the blending of these languages helped create the English we know today. William, the new King of England, went on to become one of the most influential rulers in English history. Thank you for watching Ancient Military History, your go-to resource for the strategies and tactics used by ancient militaries throughout history to conquer their foes. We are a brand new channel, and your support would mean the world to us. So, if you liked this video and would like to see more, please subscribe and leave in the comments which ancient military battle you'd like to see next. Until next time, thank you and have a wonderful day.